Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Opponent to Promote Television, where, as always, we are opponent to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we do so in a news-like format designed to expose the lies, deceit, and corruption of the world with truth, justice, and righteousness. And as always, I'm your host, Ed Walsh, happy to be here for what today is going to be our Bible Prophecy Update for November 2021. And so welcome to everyone who is here today, especially those of you who are new. If you haven't seen these episodes before and enjoy what you do see here today, please give me a thumbs up on the channel down below. And do not forget to please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you can stay up to date with all of the latest episodes of Appointed to Promote TV. And with that, let's give you our objective of these Bible prophecy updates, and it comes from the book of Ezekiel chapter 33, which says, But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet so that the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any one of them, that person is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. And that's what we are here at ATP. We are watchmen on the walls who look to point you to the scriptures that will allow you to clearly discern that we are living in the very formation of the end times that the Lord talks about in his word. So with that introduction, let's get down to this week's prophecy update, which will simply be titled Global Madness, or would it better be termed mandate madness. And let me start out by saying unequivocally that we are not here to condone or to condemn anyone who has received the procedure or not, nor are we here to debate that status. But rather, we are simply here to provide the truth of exactly what's going on in our world by pointing out that what we are seeing with these mandates is a clear precursor to the mark of the beast referred to in the book of Revelation chapter 13, which will be administered by the Antichrist during the Great Tribulation. Now with that clear in your mind, let's take this week's global journey, and we'll start things off in New Zealand, where Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern admitted she wants to create two classes of citizens based on their procedural status. Where during an interview with the New Zealand Herald last week, a reporter asked Ardern if her goal is to create two classes of citizens with New Zealand's new traffic light system, which Ardern unveiled recently. Her answer to that question? Check it out. So you basically see it. This is going to be like, well, it's almost like, uh, you probably don't see it like this, the two different classes of people, if you're vaccinated or if you're unvaccinated, you have all these rights. If you are vaccinated... That is what it is, so, yep, okay. yep. Can you describe... And with that disturbing answer, we now go to Austria, where the country is placing millions of people who have not yet had the procedure into lockdown, meaning up to 35% of its entire population can only leave their homes for a limited number of reasons, such as going to work or going to the supermarket. And thank goodness you can at least work and buy essentials in Austria, for you cannot in Lithuania. Where in September, the country of Lithuania became the first European country to impose severe COVID restrictions on all of society. Which means if you've not had the procedure, you cannot even go out to buy food, not to mention all of these other examples, which includes employers suspending their employees without pay. So my question is, if you can't even go to the supermarket or work to provide for your family, then how are you going to eat? So how could anyone stand up for this kind of behavior, especially those who would call themselves Christians? For if so, are you not condemning people to being poor or even worse? For I happen to serve regularly at a homeless shelter where we help to feed the poor, the needy, and the mentally ill. And the last thing I would ever do as a follower of Jesus Christ is to refuse these people, or anyone for that matter, 
the care, love, and support that they need and that Jesus himself commands us we provide. For let us remember what the Apostle James said about the poor. Didn't God choose the poor in this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? Yet you have dishonored the poor man. So what this scripture tells us is that when you act against the poor, you act contrary to God's values. We now move on to ask the question, what in the heck is going on? in Canada, where I think it's safe to say that Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau should change his name from Prime Minister to that of the first Canadian dictator. And here are three prime examples to my point. First, could there be any bigger bully on the world scene or stage today than China? Yet it is this Canadian dic I mean Prime Minister, who had this to say about China just recently. There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China. Um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime. Can you believe your ears? And how about this disgraceful example as covered by Canadian news? And Justin Trudeau, our prime minister, told a veteran suffering from PTSD a few years back in Edmonton that he was simply asking for too much. Uh, why are we still uh, fighting against certain uh, veterans groups in court? Uh, because uh, they are asking for more than we are able to give right now. Um, they are asking for more than we... Well, no. Hang on. You're asking... You're asking for honest answers. Again, absolutely disgraceful. And yet it was Trudeau who in July made a $10.5 million payment to Canadian Islamic terrorist Omar Khadr. And while the country of Sweden has no pandemic restrictions and is enjoying normal life, it is Trudeau's Canada that is laying out mandates and passports and even terminations to those who don't comply. Check this out. It's also very important to make sure that we know what IDs are real and our security team are all trained in that. We don't want you guys to move on your trespass property. Why, why? We're not trespassing. We bought the food here, we're eating the food here. It's How's that trespass? private property? They want you it's to not leave. private, it's public it's property. Why do they public property? Proof of vaccination will be required by no later than the end of this month for all federal employees. And by mid-November, mid enforcement measures in place will make sure that everyone is vaccinated. But by the end of November, if you're 12 or older and want to fly or take the train, you'll have to be fully vaccinated, as will staff. And if you haven't gotten your shots yet but want to travel this winter, let's be clear. There will only be a few extremely narrow exceptions, like a valid medical condition. For the vast, vast majority of people, the rules are very simple. To travel, you've got to be vaccinated. If you've done the right thing and gotten vaccinated, you deserve the freedom to be safe from COVID-19, to have your kids safe from COVID, to get back to the things you love. And lastly, do not forget about Canadian churches who have either been shut down and even boarded up while select Canadian pastors have been either fined and a few even imprisoned. So with that, let's bring it back south of the border to the United States, where mandate madness is now even carrying through to the churches, where many Episcopal churches and cathedrals are now requiring proof of immunization to attend services, and where Piney Grove Baptist Church in DeKalb County, Georgia, said it's requiring its worshipers to sign a waiver, get a temperature check, and show proof of immunization status for them 
to attend church services, where Piney Grove Baptist Church Reverend William E. Flippin said, we are not apologizing for being most cautious and conservative during this period. We said we were going to follow the science. I mean, everyone wants to come to church, but we are going to follow the science. And we did just that. Again, said Reverend Flippin in doubling down on his comments. Now, with all due respect, Reverend Flippin, if you are to truly follow the science, then you are to follow the greatest scientist of all, that being the God of the Bible, who is very specific in seeing that the gospel of Jesus Christ is available to all, regardless of race, color, creed, and yes, even procedural status. So again, as I referred to earlier, the Apostle James referred to a situation in which believers gave preferential treatment to the rich. And it's because these believers valued the rich more than they did the poor. And it was that treatment of the poor versus the rich that reflected their sinful values. And is it not similar here today, folks, for those who have had the procedure versus those who have not? We're in a message on the evils of favoritism in the church. It was Dr. John MacArthur who recently said, we tend to put everyone in some kind of stratified category, higher or lower than other people. It has to do with their looks, their wardrobe, with the kind of car they drive, the kind of house they live in. Sometimes it has to do with their race, their social status, their outward characteristics of personality. Yet all of these things with God are non-issues. They are of no significance at all. They mean absolutely nothing to him. And can I say that Dr. MacArthur is absolutely correct. For once more, favoritism is inconsistent with God's character, where impartiality is an attribute of God, for he is absolutely and totally impartial with dealing with people. And can I get an amen for that? I mean, would the apostles have forgone the opportunity to go out and provide salvation through the gospel for fear of running into a leper? And for if God was partial to the sinner, then he would have not provided a way of salvation. And let me back that up with two quick scriptures, which say in the book of Deuteronomy, For the Lord your God is the God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, mighty, and awe-inspiring God, showing no partiality and taking no bribe. And in the book of Romans chapter 2, I think he says it best by plainly saying, for there is no favoritism with God. So showing favoritism of any kind, as in this case, is the jabbed versus the unjabbed, and prohibiting select people from receiving the word of God is antithetical to the gospel and therefore incompatible with Christian faith in general. So I will pull no punches when saying, whether it be family, friends, co-workers, church leaders, pastors, or the church in general, that if you have taken up the stance of favoritism in this example or any other, then it is you who both must repent and apologize for the sin of partiality. And as we wind to the end of our program today, we will do so as always with our You Can't Make This Stuff Up section, where this week we have two items of note. The first topic is a shocker, where a brothel is offering free admission to those who get vaccinated against the pandemic. The brothel itself is called Funaplast in Vienna, Austria, or rather Fun Palace in English wherein the description of this establishment, we find it referred to as a sauna club. And to encourage immunization, they have begun to distribute vouchers worth 40 euros to anyone over 18 years of age who agrees to be immunized against the pandemic and at their location. And where it's Christoph Lilacher, owner of the Fun Palace brothel, who shares his reason for making the special offer. Business is not so good because many people do not come out for fear of the pandemic. And we have many government regulations. We have the 2G standard, so you cannot enter any pub or any restaurant or bar. People come here to have fun. And so we want to help our government a little get 
people immunized. Now, how about that for a disgusting way to manipulate society into getting the procedure? And if that's not enough, get ready to buckle in the seatbelts on your space shuttle for this one, where Vice President Kamala Harris recently asked NASA if it could use its satellites to track trees by race in various neighborhoods as part of environmental justice during a recent presentation on climate change, leading many to instantly ridicule the vice president and even giving rise to the hashtag Black Trees Matter. Check out the comments. Climate adaptation strategies. Can you, can you measure um, trees? Part yes. of that data that you're referring to in, in EJ's environmental justice but you can also track by race their averages in terms of the number of trees in the neighborhood where people live. So you heard the vice president correctly. Tracking black trees by their race? And just when you thought wokeness couldn't get any woker. And to address Vice President Harris more accurately, I think it's best for us to have our expert man on the street to give us his take. Are you crazy? Or just plain stupid? Stupid as stupid does, Miss Blue. I guess. Thank you for that eloquent on-the-spot report, Mr. Gump, where I could not have said it any better myself. And like this segment states, you just can't make this stuff up. So in these most prophetic times, and with the end of days virtually knocking at our door, let me ask you, are you looking for a knowledge that surpasses all understanding? For there is only one person who can provide that, and that is none other than the Son of God, Jesus Christ himself, of which the Word of God says in James, For if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. How about the book of Ecclesiastes? For the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money, and the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him who has it. So look to God, who is the only one to offer truth and to offer wisdom. As it says in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. So once more, get God's insight, his knowledge, and his wisdom by receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Where if you take a look at the five steps you see on the screen before you and follow those to the T with a heartfelt and repentant commitment to Jesus, and he will transform you into a child of God, giving you all of the blessings and the inheritance that he promises. For only he will make you a new creation and give you hope in these dark times. So please, if you have not yet received him, receive Jesus Christ today. So with that said, I will see you back on our next Prophecy Update, but a quick preview to our next upcoming full-length episode, which is going to be the ninth episode in our Bible Prophecy series, simply titled, The Seven-Year Tribulation. What is it? Who is it for? And when does it begin? So tune in next time to find out all of those answers. So with that said, as always, we are going to leave you with this channel's signature Bible verse from the book of Colossians, which simply says, See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception, according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. So until I see you next time, God bless.